Christmas Day, the movie The Boys and the Boat will hit the silver screen across the country. It showcases the University of Washington men's crew team that went on to win gold at the 1936 Olympics in Berlin. We dug into our archives and found a report honoring the crew team in 1986, the 50th anniversary of their Olympic victory. Here is King 5's Mike Carter with the original story as it aired on King 5 News that evening. The Berlin Olympics, the Nazi Olympics, the last Olympics before World War II. The goodwill of athlete and spectator masked a deeply troubled Europe. Even the French gave the Nazi salute as they marched into Brandenburg Stadium. Four years later, Hitler was marching into Paris. Among the parade of athletes, 500 Americans, nine of them from the University of Washington. They were oarsmen who hardly noticed a world on the brink of war. For them, Adolf Hitler was just a curiosity. As he marched down there, all of these contestants and other, uh, from other nations all stood at attention and very rigid and formal. When he got to us, we all broke ranks so we could see him closer. <laughs> these boys from Washington came to win a crew race, to win the gold. In the field of eight, the German crew was favored. The Americans were given the worst lane. But America on the far side of past Great Britain. The Americans' lead man, Don Hume, was rowing with pneumonia. While the world watched the Italian boat, nine men from Washington picked up their stroke. But there's America, way over there. Just in front to win by a yard. Italy second, Germany third. Victory was a brief diversion for these Americans. Children of the Depression, they returned to a country which offered no guarantees. But they attacked their careers with the same confidence and strength it took to win in Berlin. Difference between winning and coming in second is maybe one-tenth of one percent. So if you want to get to the top or if you want to win your lawsuit or if you want to do anything successfully, you have to spend an awful lot of time to get an edge of one-tenth of one percent. As attorney, Ernest Mock has been winning in and out of courtrooms for 40 years. Getting to this corner office on the 40th floor took a coxswain's drive and ingenuity. Judgment, letter four. Crew remains his first love. He coached at Washington before getting his law degree, and his teammates, like his memories, are still dear to him. This is a great group of guys. Admiration and respect remain the crew's common denominators, not only for each other, but for Al Ulbrichsen, their coach. Through long hours on Lake Washington, Ulbrichsen imprinted a strength of body and mind that remains. I think when you're in, in top physical shape, you have a certain bounce and elan and feeling about you, um, confidence level and, and so on, that's, that's very pleasant. Very, you know, you, you, you feel like it's a, it's a good world. His first career required uncommon intelligence. A chemical engineer during World War II, Joe Rance kept B-17s rolling off the assembly lines. His second career requires uncommon strength. He tosses tree trunks as though they were twigs. Rance builds and installs wood fences, a trade he learned from a squim farmer during the Depression. Today, business is booming, and he's as hardy as ever. Being an Olympic oarsman gave him strength and an insight for success. The understanding that absolute cooperation is the only way you can have eight people putting an oar in the water at the same time, you know? And if you're in business, uh, you can't be pulling two ways at once and be successful in an organization either. They pulled in the same direction in 1936. That was the only way to win so difficult a race. Yes, it was a tough race. Uh, I think it's probably the hardest I ever worked in my life. And uh, I always vowed if I worked that hard again, I'd make a million dollars, but I've never been able to work that hard. So, Jim McMillan remained closest so to the sport. He coached MIT's varsity crew for 17 years. In a den decorated yeah, with crew memorabilia, he remembers a race at Henley on Thames. Long days practicing in Lake Union fog. 
and Charles Day, the one teammate who's dead. He was my closest friend of the crew. Uh, he uh, was a very carefree sort of person, yet very serious, and uh, he was a winner. They are all winners, not so much because of a race that was 50 years ago, but because of the fellowship and success that grew out of rowing and winning at the Berlin Olympics. It seems only natural then that they would return here to Lake Washington, where it all began. Yeah, yeah, get over as far as you can. I mean, normally we can get an eight-oar crew across there. Let's, uh, you get down there, Bob, and we'll see how it looks. Last Friday, they gathered to replenish their memories and love for the sport that brought them together. Every 10 years, the remaining crew members take their Olympic boat, the Husky Clipper, from its shelf. These reunions are family affairs, where the past is remembered, but the present celebrated. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Shorty. Ready? Up! Okay. Ready, home. It jumps on the catch. What the? Almost enough. Hey, what do you know? <laughs> That's not pretty good. <laughs> That's not pretty good. Fifty years ago, they went to Berlin in search of gold, but found something more. Nine boys gained lifelong friendships and a confidence that can only come from being the best in the world at least once. Mark Carter, Top Story. Amazing to see that footage. Uh, the Olympic gold medal victory is still celebrated all of these years later. The book The Boys in the Boat by Daniel Brown was published in 2014 and brought the story to a global audience and it's now a movie. There is also a special exhibit currently at Mohai featuring artifacts from the team and a Pocock wooden rowing shell similar to the boat used to win the gold medal.